Welcome to this edition of EMU Today TV. My name is Mark S. Lee, and I am your host for this uh, particular show. And we're so pleased that you're sitting back and joining us and just sit back and enjoy the conversation. We're going to provide you with an update, again, with what's going on in these unusual times. And I'm so pleased to welcome back with me, again, President James Smith. Dr. Smith, thank you for joining me. How are you? Thank you, Mark. I'm well. We're, uh, we're getting into a pattern of doing this uh, a little more often than we normally do. I think so. But you know what is so important that we're having, you and I are having these conversations to make sure that we keep everybody up to speed in terms of what's going on. So I have several topics I want to jump right into uh, as we're talking about uh, the balance of this year and going into next year, 2021. Let's start with the very basic, some good news, uh, Dr. Smith, as it relates to the vaccine. Give us an update as it impacts the university. Well, we'll, uh, we'll be a few weeks, uh, probably months or so before our folks are actually involved, uh, Mark. But we'll have, um, we'll have first responders, we'll have medical professionals that will be receiving the vaccine very soon. We're in December now. Uh, we know that uh, mid-December, we're going to see those uh, uh, vaccines come forward and be administered. And uh, I think you're right. We're all excited by it. Yeah. You know, so we are beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And we know that these have been challenging times as we're still here in the fall. We're wrapping up the fall semester. But again, that's outstanding news, President Smith. It is. And, and you're watching the same media outlets I am. Dr. Fauci and others are saying before we have the general population as um, I think the marker 70 percent inoculated that um, it'll be late March into April. But each week we go by, more and more we'll be receiving the vaccine. So we see that progression. Uh, light at the end of the tunnel is kind of the way I see it too, Mark. Absolutely. Uh, and the, the, the sooner the light gets on me, the better I'm going to feel. <laughs> I, I'm with you, Dr. Smith. And, and I got to tell you, uh, as we're talking about the fall, you know, here we are in the fall. And I'm sure the students are saying the exact, exact same thing. The light is at the end of the tunnel, which means graduation. Uh, provide us with another update, as if you would, please, as it relates to graduation for these outstanding students who have been working very hard, certainly going through this pandemic, taking classes online. What are the latest plans by the university for graduation this fall? Saturday the 19th, we will do a video blowout, as we're calling it, a bash. Um, we've actually done some taping. Uh, this time I put on a robe and a hat, and uh, it looks a little more traditional for part of it. We also have the big array. I think you've been involved in this, Mark, where you send a message and say, you know, congratulations, class of 2020. And uh, we have people from all around the world. As you know, my wife, Connie, works in the foundation with international students and international alums. And we have some of them from literally as far as the Middle East and uh, uh, the, the uh, um, parts of the world that seem very, very distant to our students that are giving some congratulatory notes. Then we have people right here in Ypsilanti that are congratulating them. They'll have some filters they can use where, well, confetti, can, confetti falling down confetti. on them, and, uh, maybe some party hats. It'll be a lot of fun. That's outstanding. And, and, I, and I do want to take this opportunity to applaud all the students. As you all know, I'm an instructor as well at EMU. I teach here as well in my eighth year. Um, and it's, it's been a, an unusual time, but I want to give a special shout out to them. Uh, as we recently finished the semester, they were very complimentary to me. Well, thank you very much, but it's not about me. I want to give a, co a compliment to them. They showed up virtually every class and, and were just as engaged. And I tell you, President Smith, I was so pleased uh, to see that their engagement continued throughout this, this semester with the challenges to uh, certainly through technology and trying to overcome uh, things that were certainly put in front of us since the pandemic hit back in March. I, I would uh, I would double that and put a, an exclamation mark on it, uh, uh, Mark. I, I know that our students have struggled. It's been hard. But every time I come to campus, and I usually come in once or twice a week, I find students wearing face coverings. They're heading to their virtual classes. They're doing everything we've asked them uh, with a lot of stress surrounding their life. So, uh, yes, absolute kudos to uh, – to the students and uh, and their resilience. Uh, it's it's been uh, many of them work, uh, you know, waitressing jobs and bartending jobs and waitering jobs and those aren't as available. 
So they're having to scrap harder to put things together. And uh, I really have a, a big place in my heart for all that they've done and continue to commit to. And also a big shout out and kudos to the other instructors or professors for certainly the, the challenges that they've had to go through. Uh, just a big thank you to the university at large for all of the hard work that took place since this transition over the last several months. You, you stole my, my closing line on this one, Mark. I think uh, people say, well, you know, how hard is it to transition from in-person to online? First, it depends on the discipline. Uh, you and I are social scientists, you and the College of Business and my life prior in the College of Education, it's a little easier for us to do this. It's yeah. very different uh, for people in dance to do choreography or to do vocal work when your timing's not right with Zoom or whatever the, uh, the platform you use. So huge kudos to our faculty for putting that all together. Outstanding. And as we wrap up the fall semester, uh, we're just going to transition to the winter. How about an update as it relates to the winter semester? What can the students and faculty and everybody expect in terms of starting dates and everything else? Well, for your viewing audience, uh, we are slowing down by a week. We're coming back a week later than we normally would. We're doing uh, somewhat away with spring break. We're going to build some little breaks in throughout the semester. But then we're going to be virtual for the first two weeks. And then our about 10% of classes that operate in uh, person will go up live on January 25th. The, the big catch here, and, and you know this, Mark, because you, uh, you teach and you interact with students, is we really want to get people registered because I don't want people to be closed out of some coursework that they really need to take or want to take. So registration's open. Students can register now, and uh, we encourage them to do just that. That's outstanding. And there are a couple other <clears throat> things that I want to certainly uh, address as well and talk about recent news. Uh, one, as it relates to uh, the uh, Quirk, the, the renaming the Quirk building on campus, give our viewers an update in terms of uh, the challenges with it. Why did you decide to make the name change? And what is officially the new name for the Quirk, the Quirk building? Well, I, I would first say that uh, I won't do justice to the report that the committee did. So if anybody wants to read the full report, and I would encourage them to do that, which included a member of the Quirk family to help us think through all this. Uh, if you go to the Board of Regents page and you look for our last week's board meeting, uh, all the backup information is there along with uh, the recommendation that I made to the board uh, to do a name change. And uh, I think the thinking is, is very solid and very clear. But the answer that the committee gave to me which uh, really won the day, was Judy Sturgis Hill, who uh, many who may be watching and have an EMU connection will know yeah. Judy passed away about two years ago. A phenomenal communications professor, our first national debate champion. Lots of people don't know that. Judy Sturgis Hill was our first national debate champion as a, a student. And um, I heard from really students that knew her well all over the globe in the last four or five days and almost to a person they said dr smith you got it right now i didn't get it right obviously the committee did but when i read their report it was the right decision to make and the building name will take a little bit we've got to take some some letters down and put some letters up so we're thinking february we'll have the uh, the full blowout of the Judy Sturgis Hill Building or CMTA. That is outstanding. She was incredible. I applaud the university for making that, making that name change and the, the committee that worked on it. Congratulations for doing that as well. I um, do want to add one thing, Mark, that I didn't say. Judy was a real trailblazer. She was our first affirmative action officer and um, just beloved. And, and I mentioned that by her students and uh, um, it was really nice to see. Yeah, she was a beloved figure, so her legacy lives on. And clearly, one other topic I'm going to briefly get into is recently uh, you are part of a major announcement. Eastern Michigan University was part of a major announcement in collaboration with Henry Ford College. Exactly what is that, Dr. Smith? Well, Russ Cavaluna, the president at Henry Ford, and I are friends, and um, we have been since Russ was appointed as president. We, uh, we just got to know each other quickly and knew that we had common types of students, and we get lots of Henry Ford students, as you well know, 
Mm -hmm. uh, us, when the frontliners opportunity came forward from the governor's office, first two years of higher education being free, if you go to community college, you were a nurse, you were a sanitation worker, you were a police officer, you had to work through the COVID shutdown. Uh, this was to give back to those heroic people. You worked in a grocery store, you worked as a pharmacy tech. Uh, there's an opportunity to do two years free. And then we worked with Henry Ford graduates to come to us and give them a significant discount, almost to free. If you're Pell eligible, it is free to get the next two years. So uh, we've gotten nice accolades from the governor. I got a nice note uh, just last week from the governor and her senior staff. Uh, we really can't thank President Cavaluna enough. He came to us. Uh, he said he came to several universities and EMU was the first one to come back with uh, some uh, George Washingtons or some Benjamin Franklins. And uh, when we did that, uh, we were able to put together a very good deal for students. And we'd all know we could use those uh, George Washingtons and <laughs> Benjamin Franklins, yeah. uh, certainly at, at any point in time, but seriously, that is a wonderful collaboration, uh, acknowledging our frontline workers, our healthcare workers, and, and really establishing a, a thoughtful relationship with our friends up the road down in Dearborn, Michigan, Henry Ford College. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Smith, you know, I, I just want to, again, thank you for all that you're doing as we wrap up this segment. You've done an incredible job of keeping the university community engaged. And I want to wish you and your family a, a very happy holiday season and look forward to seeing you in the winter as well. Mark, happy holidays to you as well. Happy 2021. I think we'll all be happy to say uh, no more 2020 uh, and look forward to a great year in 2021. Thanks again well, for having me. My pleasure. Pleasure. Again, Dr. Jim Smith joining us. And we're going to take a quick time out and watch a brief video about our great institution, Eastern Michigan University. And we'll be right back. Another outstanding video about Eastern Michigan University, and I hope you had a chance to enjoy it. Now, you know, January, right around the corner, uh, MLK days, and I was student body president way back in the day. And uh, when I was president of student body, I had the opportunity of introducing the late, great Mrs. Rosa Parks. So let me just share with you just a couple of pictures here. Uh, here I am at the podium at Pease Auditorium getting ready to introduce Mrs. Parks. The second picture here is a picture, again, of myself, Mrs. Parks, but also in this picture is a, a, a photo of Dr. John Porter. And if that name sounds familiar, there's the Porter Building on campus, but he used to be president of Eastern Michigan University. And then lastly, here is a picture of Mrs. Parks, one of the most outstanding opportunities I've ever had as a student at Eastern Michigan University. All right, we're going to segue to a very important conversation, MLK Days, which are right around the corner in January. As you saw in those previous pictures, I happened to be president of student body, and it was a wonderful opportunity for me to meet Mrs. Rosa Parks amongst other people. And so the next couple of segments, we're going to have a brief overview of what can you expect this year with two of our co-chairs, and starting with uh, Dr. Doris Fields, and she's the director 
over the School of Communication, Media, and Theater Arts, also known as CMTA. Uh, Dr. Fields, good afternoon or good morning, however, whenever you're watching this program. Thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Well, it's an honor to have you. You know, I know MLK Days very well. When I was a student there, it was known as Humanitarian Days has certainly been rebranded as MLK, uh, MLK Days in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So I'm gonna turn it over to you and give us an overview of this year's theme and the expectations over the first couple of days. Okay, this year's event is a little bit different and it's actually going to be held virtually. So we're very excited about this. Uh, I'm a, again, a co-member of or co-chair of the MLK Planning Committee. This is actually our 35th annual celebration. The theme this year is We the People Speak, No Justice, No Peace. We have an absolutely wonderful lineup of EMU students, faculty, uh, staff, and public can attend the virtual event. So we're very excited about all the programs. I'll tell you about a couple of events that we're going to have that are really special to us. Uh, beginning on Friday, the events begin January 15th through January 18th. And on Friday, we will have a welcome message from the EMU President Smith at 7 o'clock. Immediately following will be the color of drums. This is an annual event for the Martin Luther King uh, Day or celebration, and it's put on by the Poetry Society, which is a wonderful group of students. Uh, this year is actually their 20th year anniversary of celebrating with us mm -hmm. Martin Luther King Day. Uh, their theme for their um, presentation of the Poetry um, <clears throat> Uh, Poetry Society will be Silence is Criminal. So I'm very excited about this and it will be spoken word for the evening, including uh, a few presentations by the Poetry Society. On Saturday, which is another exciting day, uh, at starting at 3 p.m., we will have MLK Scholarships Awards and Essay uh, Scholarship Ceremony. And it will feature, which I'm very excited about, the EMU Gospel Choir. EMU continues its tradition of recognizing individuals within the university and a surrounding community who, who exhibit values and morals of Martin Luther King. This year, uh, we are going to celebrate it a little bit different because usually we celebrate it during the Martin Luther King lunch in. But because of COVID, we had to adjust some of the things that we're doing. So this year, we will have the MLK Scholarship the MLK Humanitarian, Internal and External, and we will have the mm -hmm. Evans uh, Strand Peace Award. We're also adding uh, MLK Student Scholarship to this uh, award as well. And we were so thankful that the EMU Gospel Choir agreed to uh, help us so that they can present some uplifting and wonderful music for the community and for EMU. We also, yeah. go ahead. We have one more celebration Saturday real, night. Real quick. Well, I was going to say real quick, that EM Gospel Choir, you are in for a treat. If you've not seen them before, you do not want to miss their performance. I just want to intone that as part of I, the conversation. I, I, I second that. They are absolutely amazing. And so I'm looking forward to their presentation and how they have, we're going to have it set up. It's going to be a great event. So I'm hoping that a lot of people within the community at EMU will be signing on so that they can see the performance. It's going to be great. The last performance that we have or event we have for Saturday night is a close-up theater troupe. And they will be presenting and then a discussion uh, will uh, be held after to discuss some of the events. Now, what is interesting is a close-up theater troupe began in 1997 which is a long time. They've been with us a long time. Well, a couple and, years ago. Yes. <laughs> Their main mission is to explore health and social issues that are relevant to students' lives. And so the follow-up dialogue after they present, students will be able to ask questions, uh, really dive deep into some of the areas that the group will focus on. So very excited about the close-up troop as well. So we're having a, an amazing event and I hope everyone from the community comes and attends. 
You know, and 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 Doris, this is really an incredible event. I mean, it's like we said, it's been around for a long time. It's really become a must see for people from across Metro Detroit and across southeastern Michigan, as well as across the state. I mean, I've attended, I've been attending for years, and just to see the people's reactions and and how and how just how good it is. And this year is really important because we're coming off as we wrap up another minute or so. We're, you know, we're coming off of some challenging times. So your theme is very the, the university's theme is very apropos in terms of what we've been going through as a country for the last several months, the last year or so. And um, when we picked this theme, I think we had that in mind. I think we had something that was timely. Uh, we wanted to let people know we hear you. And so I think the, the title was very appropriate for, for this year. And one more time, Doris, the, the, the theme is? The theme is We the People Speak, No Justice, No Peace. Okay. And that's beginning January 15th as well, you said. Yes. And you could go to the EMU Martin Luther King website and all of the information, um, all of the schedules and everything is on the website. Well, Dr. Fields, Dr. Doris Fields, uh, Director of Undergraduate Studies and, and a Professor of Communication uh, for the School of Communications, Media, and Theater Arts. I want to thank you very much for your time. And I, I know it's going to be wonderful. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. It's such an honor to be here. You have a wonderful holiday. Thank you. Do the same. We're going to continue the conversation with uh, Mr. Stephen Bryant. Steve Bryant, who's the Director of Diversity and Community Involvement, and he'll give us the rest of the activities. All right, we're going to continue the conversation about MLK Days, and we heard from uh, Dr. Doris Fields about what's happening uh, the first couple of days of this spectacular event that takes place every year at Eastern Michigan University to honor the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I'm so pleased to welcome uh, to EMU Today TV, Mr. Steve Bryant. And Steve is the Director of Diversity and Community Involvement here at EMU. Steve, thank you very much for joining me. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Mark. Thank you for having us. And um, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Thank you. So Dr. Fields gave us an overview for the first couple of days for MLK Days, taking place again, beginning January 15th. And she gave us an overview as it relates to Friday and Saturday. We want to have you continue the conversation, take us through the next couple of days of events because uh, you are a co, you're one of the co-chairs and on the planning committee. So, kind of walk through the next couple of days. I believe Sunday and Monday for that weekend uh, as relates to MLK days. Absolutely. So Sunday we really kick off what's called the Academic Programs Conference, and so these are a series of sessions that are um, open to EMU students, faculty, staff, community members. And they're centered around the theme, We the People Speak, No Justice, No Peace. And these are presented by all of the above. So students, faculty, staff, community members, we're excited this year that over half of the sessions will be presented by students. So that'll be exciting to see. Those will it kick will off be. on Sunday the 17th at 1.30 p.m. And it'll start with a welcome message from Provost Longworth. <clears throat> and then once those sessions are um, done for the evening, we'll jump into our Monday morning programming that'll start at 9.30 a.m. So we're dividing up those academic sessions between two days. So that gives us the opportunity to present more sessions than what we typically do, doing it virtually this year. And so those will begin on Monday, January 18th at 9.30 a.m. And we'll conclude those at 1 p.m. with our keynote speaker. So our keynote speaker this year is Yamish Alcindor. So folks might know her as one of the um, White House correspondents for PBS NewsHour, as well as doing um, sessions for NBC, MSNBC, and contributing to other political conversations that we've seen a lot of lately. And then following the keynote presentation, we'll have a student panel response. And so that kind of ends our Sunday, Monday, events. Now, an event that will be occurring throughout the whole weekend is typically to honor Dr. King's legacy of service within communities and serving the greater community as a whole. There's usually a, a day of service where we'll take students out into the greater community and do service projects at about 12 different locations across the county. Now, we know we can't physically take people this year during the pandemic, but we're really encouraging people to get involved in service opportunities 
whether it's somewhere local in their own community or somewhere on campus or in the greater Washtenaw County community. And so we're encouraging people to utilize social media and the hashtag, um, hashtag EMU MLK service. And if folks post pictures of themselves doing service, we're going to have various prizes that will raffle off to students who are participating. And if people are looking for ways, like I want to get involved, but I don't know about things that are going on in the community, for our EMU faculty, staff, and students, we'd encourage you to check out volunteerconnection.emish.edu. That's our volunteer portal that we use. That's a um, joint partnership between us, University of Michigan Ginsburg Center, and the United Way of Washtenaw County. And now the greater community within Washtenaw County, we would encourage you to look at United Way's website, and their portal is available at volunteerwashtenaw.org. Um, so these are lots of different ways for people to get involved throughout the whole weekend. And all of these events, along with more information on how to virtually connect with us, opportunities to get feedback, where we'll post our evaluations, where we want to gain feedback for next year, will be on our website at emish.edu forward slash MLK. Yeah, you know, and, and hopefully next year it will be back, in, obviously back in person, our hope, that's, that's certainly our hope. But a couple of comments. One is I had the opportunity to be a presenter at the academic programs. And I got to tell you, that was a, a wonderful experience for myself personally. But I'm so pleased to hear that over half of the presenters will be students. And I think that's a wonderful opportunity for them to get engaged, to continue to learn about the legacy of Dr. King, the importance of these days. And clearly, as we were talking about earlier, you know, we're coming, we're, we're coming across these, uh, we're coming through these unusual times, not just with the pandemic, of course, but also with the social movement that's taking place across the country. And the thing that the university that you and, and the committee have, have come up with is very apropos for this year's activities. Again, what is that theme again for this year's or the 2021 MLK Day, uh, MLK Days? Absolutely, the theme is we the people speak, no justice, no peace. And that really came out of suggestions from students, faculty and staff because um, it's our goal to, to sing the praises of Dr. King's legacy, but then also be honest to the fact that he was pushing people in a time frame that a lot of the stuff that he was doing seemed very progressive and radical to the masses. And so we wanna make sure that we're honoring that he was a visionary for the future of where we can be. Yeah, you know, and, and as we begin to wrap up, I do want to say, again, this is a wonderful event. We're going to get the contact information one more time. This has been going on for years. I mean, again, you saw me introducing Rosa Parks when I was a student at East Michigan uh, earlier in this segment, and uh, I, I will never forget that experience. So this is a wonderful event that's put on by the university, mostly by the students. I would encourage you all to participate and attend. One more time, Steve, if you could give us the website and the dates where people can go to get more information as well. Yeah, absolutely. So the website is emish.edu forward slash MLK, and the events will start on Friday, Friday, January 15th. So again, that's emish.edu forward slash MLK. Steve Bryant, Director of Diversity and Community Involvement, thank you for joining us. We hope you have a very successful, the university has a very successful MLK days. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. All right. That's it for this edition of MU Today TV. Go out and make it a great day, make it a great week, and we will check you out next month. Have a great holiday season.